practical introduction to polar codes uh, so friends uh, this is a small tutorial that we have planned for the beginners who ever wants to work with polar codes and probably they want to use them in their research or they want to further the theory of polar codes or uh, anything like that they can probably quickly understand hopefully they can quickly understand uh, uh, polar codes and start working with them uh, just by listening to this short uh, uh, series of four videos that we are planning so we have also provided some resources uh, in addition to this video tutorial so we have also provided some MATLAB modules uh, at this particular link which is a short URL that you can quickly remember and uh, uh, go, go to and download the stuff that we have provided if you want to so we have also provided the links to this video and the PDF that we are using for the presentation of this video at the same link so essentially what we are talking about when we say polar codes is uh, is uh, is in the context of a coding problem that has been traditionally formulated by Shannon back in 1948 uh, which basically talks about uh, transmission transmitting the binary information through a noisy channel through a noisy channel and the noisy channels are characterized by uh, statistical models like uh, the two examples that I have uh, shown here one is called discrete memoryless symmetric channel and uh, the second is an AWGM the additive white Gaussian noise channel so all these channels are uh, simple examples of the noisy channels that can exist in real time so we are talking about the binary input versions of these channels so it is pretty much constrained in that sense so we are transmitting bits over this channel and we are receiving noisy versions of those bits at the receiving side all that we want to do is to to be able to recover the originally transformation transmitted information bits from the noisy versions of the transmitted information bits so um, before we go into the details there is a small uh, detail that I would like to explain in this slide that is what is actually coding because this seems to be pretty straightforward we are receiving something at the receiving side and we want to estimate whatever we want to do and this can be uh, posed as a traditional uh, uh, detection problem and there are optimal detections av detectors available as well so what Shannon says is you can actually improve the system's performance and in fact you can improve the rate of this transmission to to such a level that you can uh, you can improve the quality of the channel and the rate of the channel at the si simultaneously simultaneously by using something more intelligent something more intelligent so basically we are going to process pre-process and pro uh, post process the uh, information that we are going to transmit here so that's what I would like to just briefly explain to you in this slide so we have uh, if you consider k bits as a block uh, you can transmit these k bits through this uh, channel and we receive k noisy versions of those bits what essentially doing in this uncoded system what can be called as an uncoded system is something a fixed system where there is no variable of uh, uh, intelligence involved here so the performance of this system is pretty much fixed and the Shannon's idea is to improve the performance of the system by doing something called as adding redundancy so we simply uh, in simple words what we essentially do is take k bits convert them into n bits and transmit those n bits instead of the original uh, k message bits and receive the noisy versions of the n coded bits and estimate the original message from this coded uh, noisy coded bits that's the simple idea so basically what we are doing is we are encoding and decoding instead of directly taking the bits transmitting estimating at the receiving side so we are doing the estimation in an intelligent way and also the encoding in an intelligent way so this new variable of coding and decoding 
is introduced into the system and now this system can perform much better than the earlier system and how better is also characterized by Shannon in his uh, seminal paper where he gives the Shannon what is called what is now called as uh, Shannon, Shannon capacity the ultimate limit of that improvement where you can improve the reliability of the channel as well as the rate of transmission of the channel. So essentially you can think of it as the fundamental limit of a given statistically defined channel where you can transmit at the at most the highest rate equal to the capacity of the Shannon capacity of the given channel. So this is called as the coding system coding system which can achieve Shannon capacity if we do this pre and post processing at a very intelligent manner. So uh, all that we have to do is an intelligent processing which is good enough to achieve this Shannon capacity. And this is interestingly an open problem for a very long time. A lot of mathematicians have worked a lot and proposed a range of coding systems and decoding systems and uh, they have been uh, trying a lot to achieve what is achievable uh, with a menial complexity so that they can actually make use of it in the real time systems but unfortunately they couldn't succeed on uh, uh, they couldn't succeed in a full fledged fashion they were successful to a partial context uh, which i'm going to explain in the next slide so polar coding system is one one jewel in this range of coding systems which can actually shown in mathematical terms that it actually achieves Shannon capacity and uh, though it is originally proposed for binary input discrete numberless symmetric channels later it is extended to several q uh, several other channels query channels or uh, any other channels uh, and AWGN problem is also being pursued uh, uh, but it is still open that uh, we have to prove that uh, these polar codes can also achieve capacity on AWGN channel. Uh, but uh, rest assured uh, you can take it as granted that it can achieve Shannon capacity asymptotically on any given uh, simple popular channel model with uh, discrete, me discrete memoryless symmetric properties. So uh, that is already a great achievement and it, is the it has attracted a lot of attention over the literature. So all that it has is this polar coding system is an encoder, the encoding block, the decoding block and there is an additional block called construction block which essentially does is um, what, what it essentially does is simply to decide some parameters that are going to be decided uh, that are going to be used in the encoding and decoding processes. So let us let me give you a brief overview of what polar codes are and uh, uh, it is a small uh, glimpse of what is contained within polar codes. We are going to see some uh, detailed uh, useful information in the later parts of this tutorial. So these are the first probably capacity achieving codes. Um, the term capacity achieving is something uh, like a keyword here because there have been some codes in literature which are known to approach capacity in the sense that when, when we use them in practice simulate uh, or estimate using some of the methods their performance seems to be very close to the capacity they were they, they were able to go in fact impressively close to the capacity but unfortunately there was no uh, proof that they actually achieve capacity asymptotically uh, in mathematical terms so polar codes are first capacity achieving codes in that sense later on there are some codes called specially coupled uh, LDPC codes which are shown to be achieve capacity and uh, recently Reed Muller codes though using an exponentially high complex uh, ML algorithm uh, they are also able to achieve capacity but uh, polar codes in, in, in a way uh, inspired the later work on capacity achieving polar codes in uh, which can be mathematically proven basically. So uh, the inventor of these codes is uh, Professor Edal Arikan. Uh, he has proposed these codes in the, uh, eventually after uh, after a series of papers on the uh, a phenomena called chan sh channel polarization. Channel polarization. So uh, 
the, I'll explain to you uh, briefly uh, the result. So uh, he he published a series of papers, and the main paper which I finally describes all these uh, uh, details intricacies in a theoretical sense is this paper. So the second reference that you see here is the seminal paper which is celebrated as the um, first paper that proposes polar cores officially. So um, channel polarization, the basic technique that is being going to be used uh, in the context of polar cores, uh, is this, this kind of a polarization is basically talking about polarizing the, the channel, the noisy channel that we have given into two extremes. It is polarized in the sense of the quality of the channel. So what we are essentially doing is uh, we are making a channel completely noisy or completely noiseless. That we do by taking n copies. So if you recall, I was saying that there are there are uh, n encoded bits which are being transmitted over the channel. So we are using n n uses of the channel, n channel uses. So we are uh, that can be mathematically called as using n copies of the channel for each bit equivalently. So when once we have n copies of the ch same channel, we process them in a way that C fraction, C where C represents the Shannon capacity as already uh, been given by Shannon back in 1948, that value once we know, um, that value can be, uh, so that value C is a fraction between 0 to 1 and after this channel, channel polarization process, exactly C fraction, C fraction of the bit channels are completely noiseless. So if you transmit over those channels, the bits are received without any noise or with the noise that is uh, going down, going down in the probability of error sense, close to zero. That is, there is no noise at all. There is no error at all. And the remaining channels are completely noisy because whatever you transmit, it is completely uh, digested by the channel and nothing is coming out. Only the, only the random noise is coming out. So there is, uh, there is no way that you can recover the channel, uh, recover the transmitted bits at all. So extremely noisy channels and noiseless channels. And the simple strategy to get to the capacity is to use only those good channels for transmitting information bits and the remaining channels which have to be used will be frozen because we are we have to use n channel uses uh, the remaining bits will be frozen in in a way in a way so we we transmit only c fraction of bits c c c fraction of them to transmit the message bits and the remaining uh, fraction of the bit channels will be used for nothing just basically we transmit nothing over those channels and the uh, only thing that has to be remembered is this is a this is an asymptotic phenomena at the finite block length, some things um, so uh, uh, some things do differ. So there will be some very good channels. There are average good channels. There are bad channels, worse channels, worst channels, worst channels. So uh, there will be this this gray area as well when you are at the finite uh, length. But asymptotically speaking, this is what happens. Interested readers can go through the uh, original. Can start with the original paper, which which is information theoretically explains this phenomenon of uh, polarization then you can proceed to the uh, re uh, the more advanced papers that are later published which will explain to you in detail what is this channel polarization and so on um, but the main focus of this presentation is not to explain these intricacies of channel polarization but rather how to use polar codes and to know what are the what are the uh, basic elements that 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 of the polar codes, which are uh, somehow unfortunately very ra very very rarely explained in the literature or uh, in the in the material that is available on polar codes. So I hope to fulfill that gap by explaining those fundamental constructive blocks in in this particular uh, series of tutorial. So um, what are the attractive features of these codes? So one very attractive feature of these codes is. Uh, I mean, uh, in terms of practical implementations, one very reasonable reasonable um, expectation from these codes is to have they they should have a low complexity, a low complexity. 
and in fact polar codes not only give you low complexity they give you a fixed complexity it is no more random for every code word you'll have a fixed capacity uh, this is something uh, uh, special because the other capacity approaching codes ha don't have a fixed complexity you have to do some random number of iterations and then th there is a deterministic we also know how many exact operations that will happen during encoding or decoding and even the construction the the way we decide several parameters within these codes is also very explicit so there is nothing random uh, because the other codes have this kind of a uh, uh, ha has this kind of a characteristic where uh, some random th random randomness you see in the construction part or uh, or uh, in other parts of the uh, bl fundamental blocks that constitute the other codes but polar codes are pretty much explicit in that sense so they, they are explicit in encoder, decoder, and the construction part, and they are very easy to implement once you know the details. Uh, so th they have very good hardware efficiency and so on, as you as I explained to you in the next slide. So this this is the simplified list of all the good and bad things or good and challenging things of polar codes. So the challenges uh, in uh, uh, challenges are basically the latency part because the uh, because it being essentially a sequential decoder there is a high latency associated with it once we can crack that probably this will be the highest or, or the um, uh, fastest decoder that that can ever be possible uh, at this performance uh, but still the latency is something of desirable highly desired for this decoder and then when we compare with the state of the art codes at finite length uh, LDPC codes, uh, which are known, I mean, uh, the, the the example of the competitive, uh, competitively very good codes is uh, LDPC codes. So they are known to perform better than a CD, uh, better than these polar codes when we use the plain vanilla decoder. Once we use advanced decoders, we can approach what is achievable by LDPC codes definitely. But those advanced decoders also come at additional cost, so they are a bit costly as well. Uh, once we include that cost probably they are comparable to LDPC that is something to think of but there is a room to improvement that is the hope that's why we people are uh, um, there are many people who are working on polar codes so that they can improve the system and get the performance that is known to be best so far with much less cost and coming to the advantage of this part we do have many so as I was explaining in the previous slide simple encoding decoding algorithms and the explicit nature of every algorithm that is used for polar codes and it is very easy to implement and the hardware efficiency has also been very good and uh, also uh, this has the best available performance under advanced decoders as i was saying though a slight uh, additional cost is associated and it's a matter of research to reduce that cost and one very interesting property is though it is not proven for awg in channel we know that there is no error floor involved even if we uh, error floor is something bad happens to uh, uh, happens to the system when we use uh, uh, codes at high SNRs where uh, the where the probability of error doesn't decrease as much as we desire that is an error floor so error is 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 uh, behaving like a like a like a um, like a constant function or a very slowly decreasing function in the high SNR region so that is something very undesirable because even an uncoded system will be decreasing exponentially faster uh, at high SNRs. So a coded system is very much desired to uh, desired to uh, um, reduce in terms of error performance. Uh, the, the the error should dec reduce. The error, error probability should reduce. That that uh, performance is very good uh, for BSC and BEC channels. So it was mathematically proven that there is no error floor at all. This is something very exciting for polar codes. And that finishes this part of the tutorial. I'll be moving on to explaining uh, uh, the encoder and de decoder in a very detailed fashion in the next uh, few slides. So keep watching the next parts of the tutorial. This is the end of the first part. Thank you very much.